Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles, and today we're going to be putting a new set of handlebars on our twin cam soft tail here. Now we've already measured for our cables to see what we're going to need, and I'll throw a link to the video in the description that shows you how to measure for your cables ahead of time, even without your handlebars. So we have new cables, uh, clutch cable, brake line, throttle cables we're going to put on. First thing we're going to have to do though is we're going to have to take this tank and this seat off to give us access to um, all of our cables and um, wires for our switch housings. Then we're going to go ahead and clear off all of our handlebars. We're going to take our controls loose, get everything looser there, and then we'll loosen up our risers and get rid of our handlebars and risers. So we are replacing the risers on this handlebar install. So it's going to get a shorter riser with a taller bar. Overall height will be just a little bit taller. Should give this bike a brand new look and feel. Everybody's tank removal is going to be fairly similar, but a little bit different with specifics, so refer to your manual if you have any specific questions. Okay, so we have our gas tank off, and something to think about when you take your gas tank off is to get most of the gas out of it, whether you ride it or siphon it out, get the gas out, it makes it a lot easier to take it off. Now we have access to this, we're going to go ahead and start taking our cables off, our throttle cables, our clutch cable, brake line, etc. To get to the throttle cable, sometimes it's a little easier to take your air cleaner off just to give you that access. Once the cables are off, then we're going to want to loosen up these riser bolts underneath here before we take the bars off. Once the bars are off, the riser will want to spin, it'll be much harder to get them off there. So to get the cables off, you're going to want as much slack as you can get in them. That means no thread showing on your adjusters. That'll give you the most slack in your cable and make it easy to get them loose down here at the bottom on the throttle body or carburetor. So we're going to take the top of this switch housing off, which will give us access to the grip. We can take the throttles, throttle cables loose, and then we'll take the control loose with the master cylinder. We'll take it off the bar and we'll just let it hang down here for now. You take your throttle cables off the top here, off the grip, these little brass ferrules will jump off here. You're going to need those probably at some point in your life, so be careful. They don't go flying across your garage. I like to take them off, put them in a safe spot. Pulling our turn signal off here because the wires ran through the bars and it's holding us up from getting the master cylinder loose. So we're gonna take our, our left control loose and get rid of our clutch cable. The clutch cable is a little bit of an involved deal, so we'll put a link in the description to a video on how to change your clutch cable. It involves taking the end of the transmission cover off and uh, also includes adjustment. locating all the wires that are running up into our bars because we're going to need to have them all unplugged when we take the bars off they all got to come with us so we're locating all of those clipping all the zip ties and unplugging them then we're going to loosen up our riser bolts and then take the bars and the risers off and remember you want to loosen these bolts up not take the bars off because you won't be able to get the risers off because you won't be able to hold them tight not a bad idea to have your bike up on the lift backwards like we do or at least have your front end free so you can move it around. If you clamp your bike by the front end you won't be able to reach a lot of stuff. All right, now that we have everything loose, we're gonna head over to the bench. And we're gonna get all the cables and wires swapped over to our new bars. So we have our old bars off, and now we have to get the wires from the switch housings and signals drug back through these bars to feed them through the new bars. You can leave them on the outside with you if you want, but it's not a very clean look. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these wires, um, pull them out of here, get them to the new ones, but 
We're not gonna put our signals back through these bars because we're gonna mount our signals in a different spot later, so we don't want them in these bars. If you're lucky enough to have these little plugs like this, you should be able to drag them through the bar without taking the wires out. But if you got some bigger pl plugs in there like this, you're gonna have to take the wires out one by one out of the plug, which means you'll flip up the little door here and start releasing them from the inside of the plug with something like a paper clip. Highly recommend that you take a picture of the plug and the wire placement before, the, before you do this. If you start putting these wires in the wrong spot, you're gonna have a hell of a time later on when you go to start your bike or put on a blinker and your horn. Okay, so we have to run our wires through our bars. Little tip here to make this easier. You can take a piece of string and blow it through with compressed air to run your wire to pull your switch housing wires back through. You need to tape up the end of one bar and the hole down here where your wire come through for your switch housing, leaving the hole down here open, this hole open, and the end of the bar open. I'm gonna feed the string, in this case basically a shoestring, into the end, and then we're gonna blow the compressed air, and it comes out down here where we need it to. So you can do a couple of things here. We can attach our plug to the string, pull it straight through, make sure you have the proper side, the proper side of the handlebar, or you can pull a wire like this back through, attach the wire, and then pull your switch wires back through. That's a little safer, because if your string breaks, and you don't get it all the way through, you have to do everything over again. So I'm gonna pull the wire through and then pull the switch out and wires back through. Wrap this around it, and then I'm gonna tape these together. One down, one more to go. Okay, we have our wires for our switch housings ran through. Everything's in the proper spot. We're gonna go ahead and put our riser on now, and then we're gonna go to the bike and bolt the whole assembly to the triple tree. I'm putting Loctite on these, but this isn't gonna be the final position. We're just kind of snugging them up so we can put the riser bolts through. We'll make the final adjustments close to the last thing we do. Okay, I got the bars back over the bike. We're gonna feed the wires down to the triple clamp and then we're gonna put our riser bolts in. We wanna put a little bit of blue Loctite on those riser bolts and torque them between 30 and 40 foot pounds.
All right, factory spec is 30 to 40 foot-pounds. We're gonna go ahead and put ours right in the middle at 35 foot-pounds. Now that we've got the riser bolts torqued down, we're gonna start putting our uh, hand controls back together. I'm gonna start on the clutch side over here and start putting this side together. Um, we already switched out our clutch cable on this one, we had to have a longer one. And I'll put a link to the description on the video on how to change the clutch cable out. It's a little bit more involved um, process, so we made our own video on that. These clamps, the switch housing, and the control kind of fit together. So you can't really tighten one up before you get the other one set. They both kind of, kind of go together at the same time. See how this uh, switch housing kind of smashes down on top of the clutch lever. So you can't really tighten one up and without having the other on it. They kinda gotta go together at the same time. I just have this one finger tight and I'll start to tighten this one up. If you use grip glue, make sure not to use too much. It doesn't take too much of this stuff. And if you get too much in there, it'll take it forever to dry and your grip will never really get too, uh, too uh, stuck on there. It'll just always kinda be mushy. So, Make sure you don't use too much grip glue. We have a logo on ours. So we're gonna make sure it's orientated the way we want when we put the grip on. Also, if you have the type of grip that has like a lip right here, you gotta put it on before you put this switch housing on because it goes, a lot of them go underneath the switch housing. Ours doesn't, so it's just gonna shove right on. We're gonna route our clutch cable up here. Make sure that when you route your cables, you route them the same way they were routed before. You Basically, the factory configuration is the way you're gonna to wanna to route your cable. So when you route your cable, make sure you route it the same way it was when you started. Don't forget as you're working to plug all your plugs back in. You don't wanna put your gas tank back on and not have anything plugged in. So now we're gonna take our brake line loose because we're gonna to have to replace our brake line on this bike. I'm taking it loose at the bottom so it doesn't all, all the brake fluid doesn't run out from the top. Have a rag handy because you really wanna keep brake fluid off of your painted parts as a general practice. Once we get the master cylinder set on the bar, then we'll go ahead and take the rest of the brake line off and put the new one on. So just like the other side, we're kinda of putting the switch housing and the master cylinder together at the same time because they go together. There's a little notch and a peg that go together here. And this lines up your lever so your brake switch works in there. So when you, when you put these together, you wanna make sure this little notch lines up. You kind of start everything loose and then tighten them down together. So we're gonna put our throttle cables on. You gotta make sure you put the right cable in the right spot. You can tell the idle from the throttle by the end down here. The idle has this little spring on it. And the throttle cable is going to be the one that rolls over the front of the handlebar. When you roll the throttle, it pulls on the cable and the idle cable will be here in the back. If you have a late model bike, we're just gonna push into the switch housing and snap in there. If you have an early model bike, they'll be threaded and they'll screw in there. We're just gonna put them in there and then we're gonna run the cables back and leave them loose down here and get our grip on. put our ferrules on the end of our uh, cable here. And we're gonna put them in the grip. Be careful, those things will fall and you'll be searching around in your garage for about 25, 30 minutes looking for them. A good little tip when you're putting all this together is have all this stuff close by to you because you're gonna have to hold on to most of this stuff um, while you're putting it together. If you don't have it close by, it's gonna be a pain. 
Okay, we're all set up here. We're gonna make sure all of our, our slack is in our cable, so not any thread showing. We're gonna push all the slack down to the bottom here, and we're going to hook up the cables at the bottom. We're just gonna snug these up. We'll make a final adjustment later when we're on the bike. Now we're going to adjust our throttle cables so there's not a ton of slack in them and change our brake line out. You just want a hair movement right before your throttle opens because you don't want any pull on your throttle cable. So you have just a little bit of movement in there before it, you know there's no pressure on your on your uh, throttle cable. We're gonna pull our old brake line off, put our new brake line on. Uh, the one thing you gotta keep in mind is you need to always replace your crush washers when you do work with brakes. And like I said, try to keep the brake fluid off the painted surfaces. Also, when you route it, make sure you attach it somewhere underneath here loosely, just to keep it from beating the crap out of your bike when you're going down the road. Okay, we've got our gas tank back on, our air cleaner's back on, brakes are bled, we're all back together. Now I like to sit on the bike and make my final adjustments to the bars and the controls. I've left these just kind of snugged up, so now I can get them where I want. I'll tighten up my controls, I'll torque my handlebar clamp anywhere from 12 to 18 foot-pounds, and we'll be done and on the road with our new bars. As always, if you have any questions, you can comment in the comment section below. If you like what you see here, tell your friends, please subscribe to us, and go work on those motorcycles.